VNAV calculates, displays, and provides flight guidance to a vertical flight path. The VNAV function is useful in calculating and executing climbs and descents during a flight. This video is a continuation of our flight from Teterboro, New Jersey to Gary, Indiana and demonstrates the use of VNAV during the cruise and descent portion of a typical flight. For detailed description of the VNAV rules, refer to the VNAV overview video. In the first scenario, we are at our cruise altitude of flight level 240 and route to Brickyard VOR. ATC instructs us to cross 10 miles southeast of Brickyard at flight level 210. We can use VNAV guidance to perform this descent. In the waypoint list, click on Brickyard and select Cross from the drop-down menu. In the Cross dialog box, click on Past or Prior To. The default selection is Prior To. Enter 10 miles in the distance field and push Enter. Next, click on Altitude. The selection will default to At. Since we were instructed to cross 10 miles prior to Brickyard at a hard altitude of flight level 210, we will select At. If we were instructed to cross At or Above, or At or Below, those selections are also available. Enter an altitude of flight level 210 push Enter, and then click on Apply. In the pending flight plan, a temporary waypoint will be created 10 miles prior to Brickyard with a hard altitude of flight level 210. Verify the information and click on Activate. The VNAV function automatically calculates a top of descent point and displays it on the iNav. Review this for accuracy. This is the point that the VNAV function will begin the descent. Next, set flight level 210 in the altitude preselector. The VNAV function will not begin the descent without the preselector set to a lower altitude. The last step is to activate VNAV by pushing the VNAV button. On the PFD, verify that LNAV and VNAV are active. In this example, V-Alt is displayed. This is an indication that VNAV is active. The current VNAV target altitude is also shown. It is currently flight level 240. The VNAV function will keep the aircraft as high as possible until a descent is necessary to make the crossing restriction. In this case, we will stay at flight level 240 until the top of descent point. As the aircraft approaches the top of descent point, the vertical track alert and the vertical path indicator will be shown. The armed vertical path indicator will be cyan until the aircraft captures the vertical path. Once the aircraft captures the vertical path, the V-path mode will activate and the pointer will change to magenta. This indicates that the aircraft is actively tracking the vertical path. The aircraft will make pitch adjustments as necessary to track the vertical path. Adjust the power setting to maintain the desired airspeed. When the aircraft reaches the bottom of descent, it will level off. In this case, we are leveling off at flight level 210, 10 miles prior to Brickyard, as instructed. Add power as necessary to maintain airspeed. In the next scenario, ATC has instructed us to descend via the Lucid One arrival into Gary. We can use VNAV to plan and execute this star. First, enter the star into the flight plan. For more information on how to enter stars, refer to the video on Entering the Star. In our example, we are expecting the RNAV approach to runway 20, so we will select that as well. Our flight plan takes us to Mesa's so we will select the Mesa's transition. Once the star is entered into the flight plan, check the waypoints and altitudes with the published chart. We can use the skip waypoint feature on the INAV map to help with this. The vertical situation display is a good tool to verify the planned vertical path of the aircraft. 
It shows the waypoints and altitudes in the flight plan. The APEX system will enter the altitudes as published in the STAR. These can be modified if necessary. Symbols indicate the type of altitude. For example, the altitude at helmet is between 14,000 and 11,000. For waypoints that contain a range of altitudes, such as helmet in this flight plan, the APEX system will calculate a descent to keep the aircraft as high as possible for as long as possible. Notice that in this arrival, COPA is to be crossed at flight level 240. However, ATC has already descended us to flight level 210. Since it is unlikely we will have to climb back to flight level 240, we need to delete this altitude restriction in the VNAV flight plan to ensure proper VNAV indications. Click on the field that contains the altitude and the cross window will be displayed containing the altitude restriction. Click on Delete to delete the restriction. Once the restriction is deleted, the altitude at COPA will default to the calculated planned altitude. ATC has now cleared us to descend via the Lucid arrival. Once a Descend Via clearance is received, set the altitude preselector to the lowest altitude on the star. In this case, it is Lucid at 4,000 feet. Activate VNAV by pushing the VNAV button and verify the proper indications on the flight mode enunciator. In this case, we are to remain at flight level 210 until we reach our top of descent point, so the VNAV target altitude shows flight level 210. We can confirm that VNAV is active because the vertical mode is changed from ALT to VALT. The VNAV function will automatically calculate and display a top of descent point. Once the top of descent point is reached, the VPATH mode will capture and the aircraft will begin a descent. Adjust the power to maintain the desired airspeed. In this case, the VNAV target altitude changes to 14,000 feet, as this is the planned altitude at helmet. Once we reach Helmet, the next waypoint will sequence. The planned altitude for POSOC is 11,000 feet. We are slightly above the calculated path for this, so the aircraft makes a pitch adjustment to maintain the vertical path. Since POSOC has a hard altitude at 11,000 feet, and the planned altitude at GRIDS, which is 10 miles away, is approximately 10,000 feet, the aircraft will level off momentarily at POSOC. Once the aircraft is within 1,000 feet of the altitude requirement at POSOC, the target altitude will turn amber. As the aircraft levels off, it turns magenta and the aircraft will continue flying level until the next top of descent point. The APEX system will fly the rest of the star as published until a change is made. As we are descending towards Lucid, ATC instructs us to level off at 9,000 feet due to traffic. Set 9,000 feet in the altitude preselector. Since VPATH will not descend past the altitude preselector, the aircraft levels at 9,000 feet. After a few moments, the aircraft is above the calculated descent path. Once we are clear of the traffic, ATC re-clears us direct to Lucid and instructs us to cross Lucid at 4,000 feet. We can use the Vertical Direct 2 function to quickly recalculate and fly a new descent path that crosses Lucid at 4,000 feet. First, set 4,000 feet in the Altitude Preselector. In the Waypoint list, click on Lucid. From the drop-down menu, select Vertical Direct 2. A vertical direct 2 can also be performed by clicking on the altitude field corresponding to Lucid and selecting the vertical direct 2 checkbox in the cross dialog box. Click on Apply. A new vertical path to Lucid will be generated. Push VNAV to activate the VPATH mode. The aircraft will descend at a rate necessary to cross Lucid at 4,000 feet. 
VNAV descents are just one of the capabilities of the Apex system. To see other vertical flight profiles, refer to the videos on VNAV overview, VNAV climbs, VNAV approaches, temperature compensation, VGP mode, and LPV approaches.